here we are. This is the final series in Group A, the group of drama, where we know that Vinchester, the Season 1 champion, is going down. And he only went down because Nikov, who's in the blue, sent him there. It was crazy. Um, but Nikov, he has a chance to save himself. He will either be relegated today or with a 3-0, he will go to second place in the group. It's going down or very far near the top. Going uh, up. Yeah, T West, I'm pumped for this, man. And then for Doubt, uh, he will be second place or third place. He will only be third place if he we gets get swept. swept. He'll be third. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And starting this off, Nikov doing what people do nowadays with the Chinese, he slightly built a house and isn't going to send a vill out until now to finish it. Mm -hmm. It's ever so slightly more efficient. You get all of your vills taking your sheep when it comes in, and you finish the house before you get housed now when he's at 9 out of 10. Yeah, it's a very Nikov build. Uh, he's the first person I ever saw do it. It's 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 very, very technical. I don't think the average player should try it, but it's just a small thing to get an edge with the Chinese, and that's what's so tricky with the Chinese. You don't start with food in the bank. So even just spending all that time, all that crazy time with one villager building the house is sometimes too much. Uh, 15 seconds of TC idle time for Nikov is the dream start with the Chinese. Yeah, absolutely. You got that sheep there right away, and sometimes you have idle time at the start, and then you can struggle to get your second fill out, but he is queuing them successfully and already bringing that boar in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nikov is one of the best... Uh, this seems like a dumb statement because everyone's really good with Chinese. He's one of the best players I've seen with Chinese. He plays clean every time, and the timing on this looks as good as he could ask for for a first game. Uh, doubt is Hindustani's. And Hindustanis, you don't need to work near as hard throughout the game. They have some great strengths, cheaper villagers, and there's strong camels and, and great options beyond that. Uh, doubt has got a beautiful backwood line to work with. His map looks pretty good, but <clears throat> he does have uh, a hill which is going to hurt him or help him uh, kind of near that house there. I could see that being a castle later on for Doubt, but if someone else's castle is there, then good luck taking any of those resources. Yeah, and Doubt's even pushing deer. He's gotten two very successfully under his TC so far, and we know Doubt can struggle with this sometimes. <laughs> but it looks like he's been good so far. <laughs> he had a really bad one on Arena. Uh, it was so funny. I hope... Uh, I think it's flipped. Someone will share it, but... Yeah. So, what I'm expecting here is I'm expecting uh, scouts from Nikov. And pl maps are pretty open, so that can still be awkward for the Chinese. And I think for Doubt, you can easily justify scouts as well. It's just there's a little bit more pressure. If you don't kill the Chinese early or kill a couple villagers from them, they are going to be ahead of you heading towards Castle Age. Yeah, and Nikov has a really good back gold. He just doesn't really have a great way to wall it off from the northwest side. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of by a hill, but it's still in a pretty safe location towards the back. I mean, and I'm just glad that we got an Arabia map between these two. It's, it's I, I like seeing this map when the hills are not as small and bumpy yeah. as they are in DE's version. I think that the... It's just such a great matchup, these two. Like, Nikov is more technical and a bit faster. Doubt's a bit more strategic. But I think that since this is more messy than your standard Arabia these days, I actually think that benefits the guy who played a lot in the mid-2000s in Doubt. Because the Arabias back then were brutal, man, right? If we're talking oh, yeah. like the standard ladder version of Arabia where you can easily drop your town centers every time and you it's a race to ballistics and three TCs, I think that favors Nika, but I think the messiness that this could provide could be good for Doubt. Yeah, you know, Doubt's whenever something new happens, whether it was even back on HG when we first started playing the Civs, it feels like Doubt's someone who's able to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. One faster than almost anyone else so having oh as nikov his deer turned away at the last second so having something that's a bit more like the classic maps not quite as precise and similar every time as de's map could benefit doubt nikov had a nightmare start for titans league he was moving and everything delayed his sets came in had to play a lot at the same time it snowballed on him hard and he had to win against finch uh or to make matters even crazier so before the set against Vinchester, he had two sets remaining, Vinchester and then this one with Doubt. 
needed five wins of six. He got his win against Vinch. But I'll tell you what, man. He could have gotten three wins against Vinch. And if he could have gotten three wins against Vinchester and how good he was playing, I fully believe that Nikov could beat Doubt here today. And we'll see. It's a tough task. And still, that Dark Age, only 15 seconds of idle time for the so Chinese. Good. That is a really smooth Dark Age from Nikov. You see, it's just it's the perfect start. And he wasn't punished in any way for being greedy either, because he's scouting Doubt very late here. Um, sometimes a Drush or Man at Arm play could punish that. But I don't think Nikov will be surprised at all. And he sees Doubt's TC, runs away from it. Doubt will be making scouts. Nikov hasn't confirmed that yet. And Nikov trying to think about how he'll wall this. We might actually see a funny little circular wall. He might not even try and wall to the edge of the map in the back of his base. Yeah, it might just stay very close to the TC. It looks like that's what he's going for. Yep. That's what I like about these versions of Arabia too, is that you can you can't always just wall right to the edge of the map or have a safe wall around the TC. Sometimes you gotta get creative like Nikov's doing. Yeah, and it it's just it's Chinese too. You, you just don't wanna try and be too greedy. So many players try and wall so much, and then they just lose a couple vills, and then their advantage is gone. So it doesn't have to look pretty. If you don't take big losses early here, you're going to be in a great position in mid-feudal age and beyond. So this is what Nikov's doing here. He's just keeping his scouts at home. The walls look very weird, but he can take his berries, he can farm, he has double woodline, and he has his gold protected too. So I really like Nikov's opening and decision-making. Yeah, and he, he's going to have a better time defending that gold than Doubt is. Doubt mm -hmm. is still, even if he goes for a small wall, that hill outside of it is going to be really hard for him to defend if Nikon gets up there. Nikon does have an idle vill next to his palisade, so clearly he's not checking for idols right now, and that's that's a bit sloppy. It's not the end of the world, but you know, the longer that sits there, the worse it feels for him. And the scouts find each other, and the pathing was awkward. Doubt gets some really nice hits there. Well played, Doubt. Yeah, scouts are going to take a fight in the middle of the map there. Nikov did fix that idol and is shifting over to gold now. He's got some spearmen. Doubt will see this. And great job from Doubt. He hasn't relied on walls as early, but he has a lot more army control right now, making it more awkward for Nikov to push out. And this is still fine for him, too. He still saves a lot of resources on his villagers, and he, too, shifts to gold. So we could see archer range for either player. Or if they want to get really crazy, we might even see early bloodlines for these scouts. Yeah, early bloodlines in Scout Wars can matter quite a bit, because all of a sudden, you start to take a fight, and then you get bloodlines, and you catch your opponent off guard with it. Yep. And it also means you're tankier against the Spearmen, and both players have been adding quite a few Spears. And Nikov going to add a couple because Doubt is to attacking a stable. Nikov's being pretty calm. He has to be careful. These are Hindustani scouts. Hindustani scouts will do more damage versus buildings there, and Nikov does push it away. And meanwhile, he's at Doubt's base, and Doubt's got two Spearmen waiting. This is a really clean game from both players. They're both on point. Some people were saying, like, well, you know, Doubt's going to make the playoffs anyways. He can't, he, he's a nice guy. He kind of likes Nikov. No, Doubt likes to win. I'll tell you that. First and foremost, Doubt likes to win. And it is absolutely a big deal getting second place over third place, because if you drop to third place... Absolutely. You're going to be playing second place in some of these crazy groups, which could be like Tato, Veleza, Leary, MBL. Yo, we just don't know yet. So Doubt's got to make sure that he gets all his wins. Great game. Five scouts. No archer range for Doubt. The good news for him is he's going to he's not going to need his berries much longer. But Nikov, he loves his little archer plays. Moving forward with one archer... And three spearmen. Doubt really can't engage against that right now. And even that one archer is going to be annoying on that gold line. Oh god, Just speaking of annoying. Just shoot over it. I wonder how good the repair bills are here. Okay, they're fine. Doubt comes home. And there's the one annoying archer, as you said, T-West. Okay. Right on that gold. And no skirms for Doubt to defend against that. He yep. has no way of killing that archer. No it's a very range. this is a very doubt thing, right? Like he's just like, oh, I'm gonna stay on stable units. I don't want to get into the range, but he's gonna try and force an engagement here. And it, I mean, it could go either way. I I just think in the end, what doubt's not gonna want is he's not gonna want to lose his scout. So he takes the fight, 
Nikov Spearman. They're not getting all the hits he would have wanted, but he still did still kill three scouts. I think Nikov will take that. I think he'll be very satisfied with that trade. Yeah, I think he'll be okay with it. There is... He kept his scouts alive, right? And that's the important unit for you right there. You yep. don't really care too much about the Spearmen. It's more about the scout numbers and the archer numbers. Yeah, and more archers coming forward too. And if he can get Fletching here, he's going to keep Doubt off of gold temporarily. Doubt might not be able to get a TC up on that gold conveniently because of it, which is pr for sure what he wants to do. Nikov under pressure right now. I talked to him yesterday. I congratulated him for his series because I, I know how much it meant to him to get that win. And, and he basically said, I do not think I can win three against Doubt. He's going to win on one map. He said, so there's no pressure for me, which is good for me. And I kind of like that, you know, like... <laughs> it, it's it's yeah, going through it without the pressure yeah but the pressure will come if he wins this game and then wins the next game and then we're in a game three but what a great and, the, start. and then we're in one game decides if you're in the playoffs as the two seed or if you're relegated i know it's crazy man i'm so pumped good work from doubt trying to pick off the archer reinforcements but even better work from nikov to protect that archer reinforcement as he goes for crossbow and he goes for bodkin which feels very strong against someone who's going to be going camels and even stronger when you're controlling the gold of that person going camels. Yep. Doubt has to TC one of the smaller golds at the back, and even that gold still has a hill on the opposite side. But very resourceful for Doubt to be able to get the TC on that gold, but he is losing villagers on his wood line now, and he's not going to be able to really take wood conveniently. Nikov seeing these villas, they're kind of trapped there. There's a weird little hole. This is so awkward, but Doubt just has no army control. He's lost three villagers to this raid from Nikov. Yeah, those two wood lines spawned really close together, and that kind of helped Doubt because he has a big area where he could wall it in. Yep. But those two vills were trapped. Yeah, that was and important. You could maybe run other vills away, but that's a pretty good raid from Nikov, especially in early Castle Age. As important as it feels to get vill kills against Chinese because they start with more, it always feels equally as important to kill Hindustani villagers because they can always reboom back into the game so easily. So that was nice. And again, we're seeing how little camels are going to accomplish against such a small group of crossbowmen. Camels do not have good pierce armor, and Doubt is full boom, so he's hoping this is going to be enough. And Doubt's going to lose all of his camels. This is a disastrous situation for Doubt. Yeah, that, that spear is still there, too, and it's getting pokes on them. I'm loving Nikov's play right now. I mean, if he can continue this aggression, he could keep Doubt off of a lot of resources. Doubt hasn't gone for siege or anything. He's going to add a monastery now. And Nikov's got more crossbowmen on the way. He's just microing with so much confidence. Like, yeah, I'm here. What are you going to do about it? Good luck stopping me. And even though Dao added in that second TC early on, just that start from Nikov kept him so far ahead in Vils that he can add in his own third TC a bit later and still have that Vil lead. Dao's had a bit of idle time. Yeah, this is... Accumulating now in the Castle Age. So greedy from Dao, right? Tried to go... TCs, but the big question mark for me is why go Monastery? I know he wanted to heal his camels, but you need an answer to these crossbowmen first here, Doubt, and Doubt is really at risk of losing this game badly. Adds the siege now for Scorpions, but Nikov will have three town centers. Nikov, good eco upgrades, which is something he gets talked to, you know, Jester, Jester joked about. I don't know. I'm too excited well, I can't he's, speak. He's the Chinese. Maybe he just wants to wait until imps are a bit cheaper. Yeah. I mean, people made those jokes a lot back in the day, and rightly so. Nikov is, when he's in shape these days, he's getting more eco upgrades than other players. He's truly insane. <laughs> the timing on yeah, this too, he's on for stone. Next. At home, yeah, so gonna be ballistics. I like ballistics. Ballistics makes sense. I don't think you need to rush it, though. I think you've accomplished so much already that you could just use the resources for some farms, too. That's true. I think it matters a lot if you're trying to snipe those bills on the gold, because then mm -hmm. the bills can't mine and run away. This does kind of remind me of Nikov's game against uh, ACCM on Ghost Lake. I don't know if you covered that series, but... Yes, I did. Yeah, Nikov killed so many bills, and then he ended up losing because the Hindustanis could get a crazy boom going, but this one feels like Nikov's got more control, more confidence, and probably a better late game save as well, as he... Kills the villagers, is, is sniping the scorpion here shortly as well, dodging the scorpion shots. 
Yeah. And Arabia is usually a much more open map than Ghost Lake is, so that changes how these civs match up with each other. Yeah, true. Ballistics is in, by the way. Vikov has killed eight villagers. He's had one minute of TC idle time. If there, if there's anyone questioning whether or not Nikov can win three games here against Doubt today, just look at what he has done and rethink it. It is possible. That's, that's one minute with 15 seconds coming from the start as yeah. the Chinese. That's, that's just nuts. He's killing more camels too. Doubt did get a big shot. I shouldn't have complimented Nikov. That was a big mistake on my part. And Doubt will now complete TC number four on the gold. So he's got lots of gold control. He's got Siege, he's got a couple Camels, and Doubt's going to move out to try and get Relics too. So if Doubt can get a couple big hits, start to control the map again and work his way into Camels, then maybe Nikov won't have Crossbowmen and Nikov will be on other things. But oh, Nikov again. He's now killed 10 Villagers this On the wood line game. and this time with Ballistics. <laughs> Holy crap. Also, um, poor Running out there is probably losing his mind. Running... Uh, he is the player that if Nikov does 3-0, will be relegated. So running and, is and hoping Wallace that Doubt gets kicked out win. of the playoffs too if Nikov won or wins 3-0. Yeah, true. Oh my god, everything shifts. And crossbowman control from Nikov is sublime. 12 villagers killed, runs away in the back. Another force coming. He's gonna see the TC now. I don't think he's known about that, but he's, he's actually making L from Doubt. Nikov splits. Ooh, yeah, that's where Nikov's he's looking take right out now. The both players were looking at the back area. And that's going to be good micro from Nikov. To, so some losses, but still some good control here. And all Nikov's crossbows will be cleaned up, though, by that scorpion and the camels. Uh, yeah, most likely. Yeah, good job there from Doubt. I mean, the siege has definitely helped, right? Imagine if you would have added the siege right away. I think this would have been a slightly easier game for Doubt. But the recovery's in. He just needs to have an actual army. And with no... Real map presence. It's hard to know what that's going to be. And Nikov just running him with small groups all the time. He's got a couple more crossbowmen about to hit the right-hand side. And that's what's great about going the cross crossbows against the Hindustanis. If this was a night sieve, you wouldn't be able to run in with those crossbows the same way because the small yep. groups would be picked off. Yeah, and the it's... Camels it's... can't have that same mobility against them. And Doubt's really regretting not adding skirms now in the feudal age like he got a faster castle age but him not having skirm presence at all has just left him in this awkward position all right big moment here t west nikov has enough stone for a castle where does he place it he also just sniped a monk with light cav in the back like <laughs> 16 and 0 eco kd sniping a couple monks this is an incredible play from nikov you know what I'm noticing? Doubt is stacking that hill with houses, maybe thinking he wants to prevent a future castle drop from yeah, Nikov there maybe. between the two golds on that stone. Yeah, and he's trying to get outposts everywhere too so he can see certain things. And Nikov, he did kind of slow down on the crossbowman production. So, you know, if he doesn't have the answers to the siege from Doubt, Doubt's got 10 camels now. Any castle could be denied. Oh, <laughs> bills. Here we go. <laughs> Nikov wants that hill. I think Doubt's gonna drop his own here. That's the most natural reaction of Doubt is to just drop his own. Oh my God! You can't make it up. You cannot make it up. But can Doubt get his castle up? Can Nikov get his castle up? This could be a double Doubt castle. Oh my God! Yeah, the camels from Doubt. I think Nikov needs to abandon this position. Uh, honestly. Oh, they, they both have so much army there, but Nikov still has the Mangonels. Ooh, and, and the Camels are dying. The Mangonels are down. Nikov's castle is going to be at 80%. Doubt? He gets his castle up. No way. Nikov's castle is at 90%. It's not going to complete here. Is it? Is it not? It's close. 95%. You're kidding me. Doubt's back in the game. Nikov's not dead. Oh. He could actually go up to Imp. But he just couldn't complete the castle, which is so brutal. If that castle completes, that I think it's over. That castle would have won the game for him. Yeah. Even yeah, if, they're both, if both castles are up, because then Doubt can't take any of those resources. And, and Nikov's probably imp faster, too, for the Trebs. Oh, God. And Doubt has an armored elephant. He's looking to ram it down, and he's going to try to wall it in. Yeah, and that's the right play. You got to wall it in, even the corners, too. 
Because a couple villagers sneaking there changes things. And oh man, Nikov, this whole game was so good. Doubt's going to click up to Imp as well. Nikov's going to try and go Cavalier against Hindustanis because he just doesn't have the Archer Ball anymore. And he's scared of making Archers because Doubt has the Ghulam available in the castle. Here's a thought. Yeah, it's a Siege Tower? Like, you would have had to do it, have done it already. But Siege Towering your Vills in siege there. Siege Tower the Vills. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Nikov, if he sends, like, five more villagers, that castle goes up. Yep. Even just three, honestly. And, or had a couple more crossbowmen. If his Siege would have hit a little more on one side or the other. And that could be that, the game. That's the hard thing with the... Yeah, with the four castles is the defender they're so close they can just invest everything right away yep. and force their castle up if you're the one dropping it there's always going to be that question of how much do you need to send and nikov just slightly miscalculated and for once doubt actually calculates all of his castles perfectly he gets another castle up on a very vulnerable right hand side and now suddenly doubt's got all of his gold secured doubt's got 115 villagers he's got great defensive position He's going to have Heavy Camel against Cavalier. And, oh wait, N Nikov's actually YOLOing Vils now. I think, is he going to try and complete this? No, okay, he's making another one, excuse me. Is but there a hole for it? I guess on the back side, but I guess it's already, you know, almost dead. I prefer Doubt's position here. I don't know about you. It's still close, but I really think that Doubt could do this with Heavy Camel. Uh, my mouse stopped working for a second. Hold oh, that's, that's fun. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I lost the uh, the normal cursor in capture. I just have a Windows mouse cursor. But, Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know, Doubt's got two castles. He does also have outposts everywhere, which I think is extremely valuable because Nikov's trying to get upgrades, and he's trying to get raids in here with these upgrades. But if he sees the camels, he's going to be frustrated because he's like, "You've got to be kidding me! How do I push? There's castles yeah, the camels everywhere." Are right there. Yeah. And then, in the long run, Hindustanis, they have Bombard Cannons, they have Onagers. Usually that's what you want to deal with the Chinese. Yep. Imagine that the Chukonus could actually be an Archer unit that is useful against the Gulams. But long run, how did the Chinese deal with the Hindustanis Siege? Yep. I, I think you've got to... You have to start pressuring in the middle before Dao can mix in something else with his Camels. And your key unit's actually going to be the archer line right now against those camels, much like we saw in early Castle Age. And Doubt, he's going to be careful here. Nikov's actually just going to dive his eco because Doubt's camels were out of position. Wow. And Doubt didn't fully wall. That TC was open. And yep. these cavaliers, they have their armor upgrade. They can sit here and kill some bills. Especially if Nikov and sees they can that pick trap. trap. Maybe. And then again, now Nikov doesn't have protection. He doesn't have Arbalest yet. It's not the biggest crossbow mass. Camels. He's still going to run away from this, and Nikov needs to get more archers. You can see he's queuing them now. He's got two ranges with 10 in queue. Nikov needs to push this castle down. He needs to win this game or he is relegated. And I imagine his heart is pumping. It has to be. If it wasn't at the start, it has to be now. He was so close with that castle. Oh, man. Trebs aren't being repaired here for either player, but Doubt loses the castle. Doubt does have 34 camels. That's a lot of camels. That's a lot of camels. And no Arbalest. So Nikov will lose his Trebs. Yeah, remember, Arb was made more expensive. And he'll lose the Trebs, but he'll take out a lot of camels here too under that castle. Wow, man, this game. I, I One big thing I want to point out here. Nikov, he's really struggling to get um, farm eco rolling and just, just pan through his base. It's not looking good. He also pulled like 30 villagers to the front there to make a lumber camp. So... I think if he's still at his trebs and he could continue a push, I'd feel fine because he's just making archers, but it's just going to take him a lot of time to get the archer ball and to really push this. And this is going to give Doubt time to maybe get Skirms in or some other type of unit. Still no Arbalest for Nico. Arb. Look at his, just look yeah, at his so archer he's ranges. He's trying to go Chuko new. Yeah, this is, this is the, the stress. Look at his ranges. Oh, yeah. He has Thumbring and Arbalest in queue. It's just behind army numbers. He's just so moving so fast, almost too fast, due to the stress of the situation. Yeah, and he's not fully walled off to the north either. Yeah. As he scattered that, he hasn't scattered that. He should he should just feel though that 
wood line doesn't go all the way to the edge, but there is a hole in it anyway. I mean, doubts, doubts. He's making an interesting decision here because he's not exactly pushing Nikov in the middle. And like, Camels are, are not immune to castle fire here. So, I mean, he is going to try and control Even the game fire. this way. But now there's light cap already have Bracer. And Nikov's got good light cap upgrades too. He's killing some Vils. Adouts trying to get his skirm upgrades in and numbers out. He's struggling. And those villagers for Nikov are, I guess, idle anyways. But what Doubt has accomplished is he at least has, has killed Vils and he's pulled Nikov away from the middle push. But Nikov's back. Nikov has the middle push and Nikov snipes the Bombard Cannon with the light cap with this raid. Oh my word. Camel's out of position for Doubt. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I love this decision. And it feels like Nikov's getting a really good raid in the middle of Doubt Space. Yeah. And Nikov had been trying to move to that gold on the right and tries to get a TC up on it. And I oh, wonder if man. Doubt will be able to stop that with the camels or the light cap over there. Oh man, but 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 wait a second. Nikov has started to send his arbs forward or just lost track and he's trying so much to po focus on the front. He did lose the treb to Doubt's treb. So Doubt just holding on trying to stabilize doubt has more vills now and he's got skirms coming out and if doubt could save those camels and get all the way home with them and have them in the main battle again he might be in the better position here because he's got 46 on food nikov has 16 his food eco is just gone oh my word and nikov still trying to build that tc but the camels are going to be there oh true true unfortunately the arbs are chasing the arbs will see that so Doubt will probably want to save those camels. Doubt's still able to save his castle somehow. He's relying solely on skirms now in production. He's not making anything else. Doubt's got a lot of healthy food eco. If he can just continue to make the skirms, hold against the arbs. Nikov's got 62 of them. And Nikov has no real backup Doubt. plan. And Doubt is just now going to see that extra gold on the side of the map as he builds his lumber camp. And he only had five fills on gold so far. This is mm. huge if he notices that and he gets a mining camp on it. That's a fair point. The Treb from Nikov takes the Bomber Cannon from Doubt. That's pretty epic. Oh, what a game. I hope the whole series is like this. But honestly, I'm pulling for Nikov if you couldn't tell. I really want Nikov to get this win because that's maximum drama for us here. At least get oh, one really win. We really want to see Nikov get that 2-0 win. Yeah, yeah. That would be, <laughs> that would be insane. Game three. Down. Still no. He needs something to deal with the skirms now. Yeah. He only has mostly those arbs and trebs. He is adding more farms now, and Doubt doesn't have the final armor upgrade on the skirms, so they're not tanking that much. But again, we've seen it before. Nikov's going to lose his trebs, so he doesn't really have an ability to push Doubt's castles. And when you think post imp in Age of Empires 2, you want the castle setup. And Doubt has three castles. And Nikov has one, and Doubt could even have more than that as well. Nikov really needs to repair and keep this castle alive in the middle. Doubt's doing a good job of repairing his trebs. And doesn't look like Nikov's going to be able to push them too soon. But also, Nikov's taking a good fight with the Arbs. He's cleaned the skirms. Now it's just light cav and camels. And how does Doubt deal with these Arbs now? He doesn't have any onagers out. And Doubt's also and raiding. And is unarmored and dead. And, and now at the same time, Doubt's raiding the right side where Nikov reacts. Doubt also trying to deny a TC in the north where Nikov reacts. And now Doubt is to back away with his trebuchets, like you said. This is insane. Nikov is 40 on food. So his eco is looking better to get like have out. And still 2-2 two to two on relics. I, I still think Doubt's late game position is better. Nikov needs to get through some raiding in. But an incredible hold from Nikov. After he almost Doubt loses a treb and he might lose a second. Oh, true. Oh, man. He repairs in time. Okay, so let's talk... still hasn't noticed that gold in the back. Yeah, I was just going to say, let's talk golds. So you've got the gold on the right for Nikov, which he's kind of on. He'll need to take Doubt's Treb. Doubt isn't taking the gold in the back of his base. He's got a little bit more to work with all behind these castles. My goodness. And something else, relics are 2-2. Two to two. Nikov has a third that he just built a monastery next to, so it looks yeah. like he's going to have that 3-2 to two lead. And is kind of in position, actually, to push Doubt's monastery. If Nikov could have just kept his some of his trebs close. alive, if he just had trebs, he could at least take some of these castles. But he's just stuck. He's frozen. And it is so much harder to play yeah. when you do not have the defensive castles. And in the north, Nikov has holes in that wall by the houses and the market. Yep. And Doubt has a whole bunch of uh, stables there ready to run through, either with camels or more light cav. 
Nikav really needs to finish that wall up to the north. Dal needs to prioritize Hussar here, I think. And he just needs to, to play, to continue to raid, and then just be ready for that next push from Nikov. Get the skirms prepared for when the trebuchets come forward from Nikov to push a castle. It's going to happen at some point here, Dal. I guess then again, Nikov's oh, got the center else. castle. Yeah, well, maybe something else to start thinking about is that center castle is important because it controls the wood if this goes long and becomes a wood game. Yep, but yep, it yep. feels like Doubt should be able to push this down now. Yeah, and this is a tough situation for Nikov. If Nikov has to address the trebs and the bomber cans from Doubt, and he has to leave his own trebs. So unfortunately for Nikov, you just have to give your castle up and hope you take out Doubt's castle. And it's almost like Doubt thought about it because he's got one behind it too. Just really good late game planning from him. Yeah, that castle now opens up Nikov's front and all those farms to being raided. And this castle, since Doubt has another one behind it, doesn't really hurt Doubt immediately. In Ooh. the long run, it will affect the wood. Still a lot of arbalest. There's still 30, 40 arbs. If those arbs die and Nikov hasn't done more damage, this game could be over for him. He, he really needs to get more value from that. He's done a great job. He takes the castle out. <laughs> This game is unbelievable here, folks. This is insane, especially with the stakes we have. You know, I, I still feel like that was a mistake from Nikov to trade off that center castle. I feel like that's such an important position for him to hold. Yeah, maybe. He was on that hill, too. And maybe he couldn't address it. You know, like, this is still an awkward fight for him. He's a little uncertain if he can take it. He's going to use the trebs for the bomber cannon. He needed that. But his R ball is down to 32. Oh, man, he's got a hit and run, hit and run, and get like have on the skirms. Easier said than done. And yet again, Nikov, he can't save his trebs because he has to micro these archers. And I don't know about you here, T-West, but it's beginning to feel like, and it has felt like, that Dow could grind this out with better economy. Still weakening the arb ball. And if the arbs are gone, it's just going to be like have for both players. There's no special the bonuses Nikov, there. He still has 15 bills on gold. He can still add more arbs. He just needs he just needs time for that. Yeah. Right? Like that's the hard thing about the arbs. When you lose them, yep. it takes time to add enough enough mass that they can be effective. Whereas the cat, you can just kind of keep spamming them. And I think going halb is a, is an option, right, against the cav. But it is a yes, sign as well dude. that maybe you're losing momentum, because doubt he continues to win the fight in the middle. Nikov has to fall back, and it's just looking worse and worse and worse for Nikov. All because that castle was denied earlier. <laughs> Holy crap. Nikov at 150 vils, but he needs to start getting his army numbers in. It's yep. 54 to 20. And how does he stop that light cap raid? He's trying to tech into Halb and add barracks. And he has the techs on the way, but it's still going to be a bit before he has a big enough mass to fight this off. Yep. And, and Doubt's go back behind his castles. Doubt's in the dream position now, because now Nikov has fallen back fully, and then Doubt just switches sides. And he also has Hussar in. So Hussar much stronger than the light cap that Nikov's making. Pretty capable against low numbers of Arbalest, and Doubt's just going to switch sides constantly, pick Nikov apart. Very rarely are players able to ever bring it back from Nikov's current position. Just amazing late and game still control Nikov, from Doubt. Those holes in the wall to the north. That Hussars keep pouring through them. I know from their it's, it's such a frustrating thing to not have been able to realize, but he can't really fix it now. Look at the army, and also look at the unit queue in these situations. He's got about ten units queued, Nikov, but less in the bank. And then Doubt's gonna have upwards of that. I mean, he's gonna have like thirty units in queue, I think, pretty soon if he spends his gold properly. But after all that raiding, finally we do have some halves out for Nikov. This might give him the option to address those Hussars. And he's just about to finish that gold in the south. Doubt still has a bit of gold left in the north. And we're going to start to get to the position of the game where the gold runs out. And yeah, you don't have Hussars, but at least you have Halb. Yeah. I feel like Halb is a bit more valuable than the Hussar upgrade in these late game situations. Yeah, I, guess, I suppose that's true, right? When it comes to counter damage, though... Halbs aren't going to help you against the castles. And Doubt's the type of guy where he's going to buy stone and he's going to drop a castle if he feels he's vulnerable somewhere. Wherever that may be. He and takes out another one of Nikov's castles. And the, the scores are getting close to flipping. Yeah. And Nikov, Nikov will know everything that we're talking about too. It's how, how difficult it is for him to play from here. 
A doubt will probably even fall back in the middle, and then he's just going to be an immediate shift. Look on that right side. Uh, probably a little wasteful from him to just toss away two trebs like that. But that's the idea, right? Just keep switching sides against those castles. Yeah. And the thing is, now you're at the point where there's no more gold left to mine. It gets really hard to buy stone to repair those castles. Yep. And Nikov is out of stone. Yeah, exactly. And, and Doubt's going to love that castle in the north because you can just easily have trebs behind the wall. It's very hard for Nikov to address there. And gut-wrenching for Nikov. I, honestly, he played such an incredible game. Like, it felt like he was going to dominate this game. But he went for the aggressive castle, and he didn't have the army support. And Doubt just counter-castled immediately, which is his experience. And that was what opened well, up what the window. Do. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's just the natural reaction, right? You see a castle, you drop your own counter-castle to it. And Nikov just barely didn't get it up. Doubt's going to go Cav Archer now. Look, that tells you that he's got some gold to waste, right? Going heavy Cav Archer... And good job from Nikov to finally get a counter raid in here. Yeah, and it's going to be so hard to raid Doubt from this position because he still does have those three castles up in yep. his eco. Yeah, it's just, it's going to be so nice. I mean, I'm looking at the kills on these castles and it's, it's already collectively about 30. But, you know, that we haven't really even seen units try and raid. So it would be in the hundreds if they were raids. And Doubt's got, wow, he really made that switch. He's got 30 heavy cab archers just like that. Well, it's, it's a very population efficient unit, right? Like it's one on one. They beat the arbalests, mm -hmm. even if yep. they don't have as much range. And he's got more of them. And one, one other thing to note is that neither of these players have their farm upgrades. They only have horse collar. So Ooh. if this drags out and becomes a wood game, they could struggle in the long run. It. Yeah, they Nikov could. still has 60 on wood, but Dow only has 13 because he's been raided. I think Nikov has known he's dead for a long time, but he sees his population but he's 200. Got a fight on here. Yeah, and you've got 200 pop, and you know that if you lose this, you're relegated, and you know that you played well enough to win this game as well. There's a lot of emotion involved in this situation, but he has no choice but to call it. Doubt's a late game beast, and as rough as it looked for Doubt and Castle Age, it's a very Doubt thing to somehow make it happen in the Imperial Age. And yeah, Nikov's population is going to plummet here. He's got one light cap counter attack, but even Doubt reacts there. There's just no and way that you can do anything now. Pass. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. Oh, Nikov does get heavy plow. Woo! He gets his eco upgrades before. <laughs> <laughs> before calling, calling it. Oh, there's the GG. Dude, I, I don't know. Like, obviously, we knew it was going to be tough for Nikov to get a 3 over Doubt in tip top shape. And Doubt has looked really good in Titans League. But I don't know if there was a more gut-wrenching way to start the series for Nikov. Right? I, what I wanted to see was, I wanted to see Nikov win the first two games. And I wanted that third game to be a two-hour slugfest. <laughs> <laughs> and Nikov came so close. It's just that castle there. Oh, that, that must feel awful. Yeah, it, it got to got hurt. And now it's like, you know, you're fighting for $40 a win in the next two games. But... At this point, there's no change in the table possible. Uh, and so we will see the final two games. Excited to cover them. But that just shows you right there, guys. If you watch how Nika played that Castle Age and how, how strong it was, it shows you how perfect you have to play to be the best in Age of Empires 2, to, to beat the best players. Because Nika was demolishing doubt. Maybe if he would have gone for a more defensive castle, it would have been okay. Had he sent three or more, like three more villagers, honestly, T West, and just completed it, I think he still wins the game. And he does not. Um, well played, Doubt there, and we'll move on to Nikov's home map. But that means that we have uh, ACCM, Doubt. Is it Vallis then? In the yeah, well, Vallis ends up third. Let me pull up the standings. Yeah, here. I'm gonna. I gotta look at this too, actually, because I, I would like to talk about this now. Because I'm not gonna be able to hold myself back from talking about it in the middle of game two. Yeah, so that means ACCM is first. Doubt is second. Vallis is third. Running. Yep. Loses the tiebreaker to Vallis and is fourth. Yep. And Vinchester and Nikov both get relegated. Yeah. So that's confirmed. The only thing that could change based on the final two games is whether or not Nikov is 5th or 6th. The 5th and 6th spots are both relegated, so yeah. 
Well, I guess early congratulations to Vallis and running the two promoted players from gold for one for making the playoffs and, and the other for staying alive. But yeah, we got more games to cast here. What a crazy group. And here we are. So we expected to see Spanish from Nikov. And we, we really like the way things look for him, right? He had Chinese for game one Arabia. It's Spanish for Nomad. And then I even forget what the final map was, but the sieves were going to look good. Unfortunately for Nikov, this is merely a consolation. It was Byzantines for Cross. Ah, uh, that's what it was. Yeah, it was looking really yep. good for him. Yeah. So he's got Spanish here, uh, which who we love, but we also have seen a lot of the Malians on Nomad and love as well. Yeah, we have probably the second pick after the Spanish, other than perhaps some crazy Portuguese games. But this is a Nomad map where the left side is connected to the edge and in the middle we have another one of those middle lakes with some oh it looks like five deep fish in it it's kind of cool how they're on opposite sides of that shoreline and just yeah how they both kind of have their dock on the opposite side of their tc yeah it's like they could look out their window and see each other over there like hey look at look what he's doing over there that's pretty cool well it would have been even crazier if they both had tc there and they both docked the middle but that hasn't happened here, so... Um, that, that would have been just a, a quick game of Baltic. Like, you make your fire galleys and try <laughs> to win the middle. <laughs> right. And then, like, they go land pressure, but archers go to the north for one player and south for the other. And <laughs> that'd be pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> well, um, what's kind of interesting about this is that the dock villagers are on opposite sides of the TCs, which shouldn't play a massive role now. But if they were to somehow scout where the other's dock was, they could even send a villager there to attack those dock villagers if they weren't walled in. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, this opens the possibility of they could both send a villager to dock the other player's dock. Mm -hmm. yep. Or that forward vill could also do some type of sneak archery range if they wanted to go to the feudal age. There's lots of possibilities there with what you can do with that. Yeah, that's a good point. Also, I mean, eventually that fish is finished. And while normally the dock villager normally makes the second dock, if you were to ever send him home, then you might run through the other's town center. So we'll keep an eye on that. Right. It seems like Doubt is going to find the dock for Nikov. And as long as he's thorough enough with his water buffalo, he should lose it. And boop, he now knows that that's where Nikov's fish is. Yeah. And on the other side, Doubt looks like the same thing's going to happen. Nikov will send the water buffalo and lose it there. Yeah. Doubt could potentially lame that rhino with the vill he has there. Yeah, it's true. He just, he just doesn't, wants closer to the palisade. He doesn't know right now that the TC is there. If anything, I think that boar will probably be found by Nikov, and then Nikov will uh, basically show Doubt that he's close, if Doubt's paying attention to that. And it looks like that's what he's doing right now, as he's sending a vill out. Yeah, that's good. And if Doubt's paying attention, he'll see it running in the fog. Yeah, these That's a guys, hard thing to pay attention to. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's a completely different skill set, but these guys have really nailed the start here for Nomad. The thing that's fascinating for me, though, is that uh, we've had multiple players not ban Spanish when there's Nomad. They've kind of just not even picked it first, right? We've had Mayans, Malians, other civilizations preferred. So I think the weakness of Spanish right now, as good as they are, is just that players are so good at finding the fish... That someone in Doubt's position is just going to know exactly where to go. And if you don't have fish, you could really struggle to get the fast castle with the Spanish. Yeah, I also like Nikov's TC position. He has a very safe gold and a very safe stone mine. And that stone, stone is crucial if you want to build conquistadors. And yeah. I don't think it's in a spot where Doubt could... We've seen Malians. Sometimes they want to go for that feudal range and pressure it. This feels like it's a spot that Nikov should be able to defend. Maybe he needs a tower or two in the Feudal Age, but it's all very close to the TC, and those wood lines are thick enough that archers won't be able to shoot over them. It would be... It would kind of make sense for both players to, instead of build a second dock next to their current fish, to sneak a dock next to the other's dock. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, that's huge. That's what you see a lot from the Malians, right? If they try to go up to the feudal age faster, they can go for that sneak dock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you might be thinking the Spanish want to go for that fast castle for the castle drop. So if you can disrupt their fish, that's about all you can do to disrupt them while they're trying to age up. At the same time, you probably are going to have the knowledge 
that you've been spotted. And so not having two dock production in defense could be a problem. Um, as that pretty much ensures that you're going to defend your fish. Because the most they can have at the start usually is just going to be one. You go two in the same spot, you're normally good there. So I guess we'll see. Like you said, Malian's probably able to achieve more with less. So they could probably go two defensive docks and then an offensive dock as well. They wish to. Nikov sending a vill over. Looks like it's just to pick up a buffalo, though. Okay, looking around. Definitely feels like we'll see a second dock from Nikov towards the south right now. He's just waltzing down there. Nikov brought in a lot of food. He still hasn't clicked up here. So this is Nikov is going Fast Castle. And and this is Doubt going for a dock. And this is Nikov. If he, if he wants to be really cheeky, he could use his fishing ships to block the dock like yep, he's doing yep, yep. there. <laughs> I like how Doubt isn't messing around. He's like, I don't care if you see it. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to kill your fish. What about it? <laughs> and he's, he's like, I don't care if you don't have scouts on Nomad. I'm going to wall my villain. Yeah, true. Yeah, I guess there's always a concern that Nikov could send his vill if the vill is still there. I don't know. Like, I get the idea from Nikov. He's he's docking further towards the south because he wants to... He doesn't want to fully give up on his fish. And look at him split them. He's going to send three one way and three the other way, so Dao can't get them all. Yeah, and that way, Dao doesn't know which way to send galleys if he wants to chase the fish right at the start. <laughs> Duh, quick wall doubt over here, saving the villager. Being annoying over here. <laughs> okay, look at this. <laughs> this is Doubt we're talking about. Nikov wasn't really doing much about it, so Doubt should be able to pull it off. But good play there from a player you don't normally see many quick wall clips of. And now Doubt is definitely fully aware of this is where Nikov is. And more importantly, he scouted the mining camp on the stone. Yeah. So he knows this is going to be fast castle conquistadors, if you couldn't tell by the uptime already. Yeah, he did. Dow adding a fire galley from where his fish are right now. And I think that's because he knows Nikov's looping, so he might actually catch some of those. Also, the fire galley is down towards the new dock from Nikov. And I guess the second dock didn't hurt Nikov that much, but Dow just onto him. Knows immediately where those fishing ships are going to be headed. And at the very least, Nikov's just not going to be able to bring in a lot of food eco with his fish right now. Yeah, and you can't afford to keep pumping out fire galleys if you're trying to fast castle. Yep, exactly, because you need the blacksmith in the market. Uh, small thing here, Doubt's fire is currently not doing any damage to fish. So there we go, he fixes that. And Nikov yeah, did a, over the dock. Nikov did a couple smart things here. Uh, the fishing ship that's in the south, he, he ran that away. But sometimes what players will do is they'll forget, and they'll just chase you the entire way, which allows your other fishing ships to fish. Doubt's not letting that happen to him here. Uh, maybe he is now, but he did actually double back to the dock, which was the correct play. Yeah, he's only doing that after he pushed the other fishing ships away. Yep. So he's trying to find these last couple hidden ones. Nikov. And in the north, looks like Nikov wants to redock as well, try to sneak those fishing ships away. As Doubt did not chase that direction so far, and just is sending the fire galley now. I feel like Doubt's looking for it, because he sent the fire galley from that side. And he's kind of got one checking the little nooks and the little bay area in the water. But honestly, with Doubt doing so many different things, sometimes you just don't realize how many you've killed. You just assume, ah, I probably killed the others. So sneaky move from Nikov because that food eco is going to be so helpful. He only has so many water buffalo and conquistadors cost food, so he's going to need it. And he is fully walled on the land so he can keep himself safe. If you're Nikov, do you consider dropping the castle? Because it looks like you're going to drop it in your base. Do you drop it on that dock from Doubt just to kill all of Doubt's fish too? If or you, at least force Doubt to run them? If you knew Doubt had one dock over there, <laughs> that would actually be amazing. But I think that's a play that is, your player is never going to do because it you, you need to protect your gold. You need to protect your TC. So... Yeah, with what we know, absolutely. Because then Doubt would have to sail across the map. But I think with what he knows, I don't think it'd be the it'd make the most sense here. <laughs> I guess there's another option of do you, if you get to the castle age, do you ever consider one, you could do your own dock for one fire to disrupt that? Or even just putting a tower there? Yeah, maybe. 
I mean, you could even have a conquistador <laughs> next to that dock killing the fish because Dow continues it, to drop all yeah, food there. Yeah, just something to disrupt it. But the thing is, he doesn't see any of the fish movement, right? He has no reason to believe that that's happening. He should be assuming that Doubt is probably fishing freely more towards the east. So, Castle's going to go up for Nikov. Well, he is, too. Huh. That is 10 fishing ships for Doubt. Yeah. Dude, this is this is so smart from Nikov, actually. It might seem like a really weird castle to most people. But the greatest thing he needs right now is food. So, a castle on the hill and the choke point, but also in a position where he can get food income is so helpful for him right now. Yeah, because those conquistadors will cost food, and this is not walled from doubt. You know, sometimes we've seen some stone walling, and the conquistadors will be able to just get right in, and doubt's going for a stable. Yeah, doubt will have so much food and gold, right? So he could maybe make a couple camels to, to fend it off. Normally it's camel, monk, and eco. I'll tell you what, if Nikov knew... Oh my god, wait a second. Nikov's going to see Doubt's fish. And Nikov upgraded stuff on water. He didn't give up here. If he notices that, he will kill Doubt's fishing ships. This would be huge. And he does notice it. Doubt's going to be like, fire ship. Dang. Nikov also had to micro the conch at the same time. And just misses out on killing the villager. But I think Doubt's going to be really frustrated with himself that he allowed Nikov to stay on water. This is news to him. He had no clue about that. Yeah, and look at all those fish in the north. This is one of those nomads where you have both. Usually there's like one pocket or one corner where you have a lot of fish. This yep. one has fish on both sides, and Nikov's taking advantage of that in the north. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the people asking, people are curious, can Nikov survive? Nikov, at best now, if he were to win this game in the next game, would be tied with running, but he would lose the tiebreaker to running. So it is statistically impossible for Nikov to stay alive in Platinum League. He knew that. He, you know, Doubt knows that now. And Doubt's a lock as well for second place in the group. So Doubt's going to be much happier than Nikov at the moment. But $40 a win still. And Nikov's really played a nice Nomad game. This has been a beautiful game so far from him. And I think he's actually in the better position. It has to be careful with his fire ships now and that he doesn't take too much of a fight before the demo comes in. Yep. But he could get a decent demo here if Doubt isn't paying attention. That's a decent demo, but great job from Doubt after he noticed that uh, Nikov was back on water to get a position. He also has the demo. So that demo should assist in getting two more kills. But, you know, as he tries to do that, he's got conquistadors that just killed a monk. And he's losing a couple villagers. And, and that's why you need to be so far ahead of Spanish. Because these conks just wreck everything. Yeah, as, as soon as they get in, there's just any tiny space where they can hit a villager. Three of them will come in and snipe it off in one volley. Yep, exactly. And one more clarification here. People are asking how the tiebreak works. So you, if they're tied on games one, the first tiebreak, nice conversion from doubt, is sets one. And then in the event that they are tied on sets one... It is then the head-to-head. -head. So, uh, I forget if Nikov will have one... I think he's going to be one series win behind, but even if it's tied, uh, he had lost his head-to-head -head against running, which is the main concern there. <laughs> A typical Nomad, where it's like, you got to build these TCs in the same spot because you're so terrified of Conquistadors running around your base. Yeah, exactly. And Doubt just has three TCs right on top of each other. Luckily for him, he has a nice hill near the gold that the TC fits on it. Sometimes you get those hills that are real bumpy and you can't actually get the TC on top. Yep, yep, yep. But I, I think those we would have a very different game if Nikov didn't kill some fishing ships and have four or five fishing ships. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but the fast castle plays a little bit risky and it's tough to afford the conks. He's got seven on the field. He's got two TCs. Nikov's got pretty... Solid economy here. Oh god. Those those conks though just went right into that town center. Not so pretty there. Yeah, I'm sure they would have liked to have not eaten those arrows. And if you look at the bill count, doubt with the extra TC up 43 to about 40 and has a few extra fish too. Yep. I do think at this stage though, once the town centers have come up and you've already benefited from the fishing. It's helpful, but less important. So I think it's gotten to that it's, stage of the it's game. It's that castle age transition 
where they really help you, especially if you're trying to make conquistadors and villagers at the same time. Yeah, it basically gives you the food to produce out of towns, villagers out of multiple town centers before you have farms. And then once you're producing out of those TCs, you start to mix into farms in most cases. But doubt, doubt is like still adding tons of fish, we should say. So great job from him to get value from the water still. Yeah, and he still has lots of room to do that in the south. It looks like the conquistadors might... I don't know, they're hanging around the south. They could try to hit those docks, because Nikov does no doubt docked on that side. There's okay. a lot of fish that they could potentially snipe off if he goes there. Look at Doubt's vision for a second. He's going to lose two monks. He does get a conversion. And the conversion is actually helpful here, because it, it acts as a kill, obviously, uh, in a way. But he also killed another unit with it. Kong's still running around, and it's just a tough unit to convert. But Doubt's got lots of vision here, T-West, and I've loved that play from him to get Town Watch early and build all those houses forward. Yeah, the houses now, with Town Watch, kind of act as mini outposts for him. So he knows exactly where the conquistadors are at all times. Yeah. You can look at the middle of his base and toggle his vision, and the map doesn't even change because he sees everything. That's yeah, so good. Nikov obviously has a whole lot less vision with the Kongs, but he has an idea of where Doubt is, and he definitely knows that He's killed quite a few monks from Doubt. Doubt only has one or two of them. Only one or two camels. That's tough once nice the Kongs get to these numbers. Too. Another conversion has attempt some good here. demo shots, too. Ooh, yeah, okay. So some action on the water still. Doubt's, uh, Doubt's fires are very weak. He's got 10 HP of fire there with two fire shifts. <laughs> <laughs> I love this from Nikov, though. He's been, he's been so good. Just pressuring on the fish. And then also had brought Doubt back to his castle, where he's got a monastery and the castle fire. Doubt seems to kind of be struggling to keep up with things. I know that he's leading right now with the eco, but that KD just shows you how in control Nikov is at the moment. Yeah, and how good those conks are with their mobility. The monks are walking over to that dock, but the conquistadors have already gone away. Yep, that was a big demo. And it feels like Nikov's Doubt. winning on the water, too. Yeah, I would love to see Nikov dock the south right now. I feel like he should be able to do that, if you could think of it. But, I mean, he's doing so many other things. And I guess if you're on three TCs with this economy and you've killed as much as you have, you're kind of okay with Doubt having some fish as well. You consider it even at this point, at the very least. Yeah, with three TCs, you feel like you're booming. And Nikov is on 72 vils. Which, you're getting to that point where you have the villager numbers you need if you need to start pumping heavier army at yep. any point. And I think it's it's still very questionable what doubt makes in the long run, right? I mean, sure, you, you can have some monks, but what do you make against Conquista? Or you'd almost have to go Skirms. But the Civ that doesn't have Bracer, that doesn't excite anyone. And nice defense there from doubt on one side. But on the other side, it looks like he lost a monk and more conks are running in and... Dude, this is why people ban Spanish. Uh, it, one of the rare times I actually get annoyed when I'm casting. It's just so tough to stop the Civ. Ridiculous micro from yeah, Nikov. And, yeah. and if you're the Molly, it feels like long run, if you can get to the Imperial Age, maybe get to your Ferimba Knights and Camels, then you might have an answer. But it's just so tough to get to that point when the Conquistadors are running all around your eco. Yep. And Doubt's got a garrison, a million TCs. Doubt's got to do so many different things. Nikov, he doesn't need to look at this. He can look at his eco right now. So his units are chewing up Doubt's units. He's a missionary. Let's go, missionary, Nikov is a missionary. Worth it. It's actually worth it, I think. You don't really... He chases the conquistadors and heals them. Yeah, you just need it for healing. You don't necessarily need it for anything else. Obviously, two less range... When compared to a monk, and oh god, there goes the missionary! Come on, Nikov! <laughs> what are you doing? Look at Doubt's balance here, T-West. This is rough. He doesn't know where to go or what to do. His TCs are all garrisoned. He's gonna try to take one fight with the camels, but even that is rough. Yeah, for what it's worth, Doubt also has zero upgrades. So, uh, there's been a concern there, but I'm... I mean, we're also looking at Conquistadors with zero upgrades, so it really shows you the difference. Well, I think he has Husbandry on them. They're at 1.43 on their speed. Okay, gotcha. That, that is potentially the most important upgrade against the Camels, just because it means you can outrun them. 
without husbandry there at 1.45. Okay, gotcha. Well, yep. Uh, bloodlines now for Nikov, so he has more HP. Nikov's still got the group on the other side. I'll kill the monk for converting his friends. Uh, water buffalo is very confused and damaged. <laughs> okay. He's just standing there. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't move my... If someone was shooting at me, I, I guess I would try and move, but maybe I'd play dead. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, this is, Despite this is all of this, Vil counts are still just about even. 92 to 93. Doubt still just has more fish. And resources collected is also very close. But I guess if you look at the KD, the value of the army has, has been maintained here for Nikov. Like, he has made army and spent resources that he's collected on said army, and he has not lost it as frequently as Doubt. Oh boy. Actually, maybe jinxed him a little bit. Doubt's got a lot of camels all of a sudden, and Doubt's going to drop a castle there, which protects this side. Yeah, and this is where it gets maybe a bit awkward for the Spanish player because you're hitting that point where once your opponent has production, the conquistadors start to drop off in their strength. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah. they're not really that great of a unit in large numbers versus other units. It's their mobility and firepower in small numbers that really is their key strength. Yeah, makes sense. I like what Nikov's done. He's, he's placed a couple extra town centers on golds. Doubt is Malian, so his gold lasts longer, but I'm just looking at gold access, and he's got his... The one underneath his TCs, but that's almost gone, and then he's got one more gold, and that is to the right side, and he's actually stonewalling around that right now. The gold is definitely a concern for him. This has been a really good Nomad game. Like, honestly, and game one was also incredible. I've enjoyed watching this so far. Nikov wants a castle on the other side of that wall. And the villagers just need to pathfind their way to it. Does Doubt have enough camels to stop this? My gut reaction is to say no. But Doubt's going to try the it's same finished. thing we saw in the first game. <laughs> oh, you can't make it up. He's going to vil fight the vils on the castle. This time Nikov is Spanish, so his castle does build faster. Yeah. But Doubt will have so many more vils. Can you imagine if the same thing oh, happened to Nikov here? Can you imagine how frustrated he would be? He would definitely say something. <laughs> the castle's at 72%. I, my gut but reaction is to say he's bills. okay? No way. That converted no. conquistador. <laughs> oh no. 89.88%. The rest of the bills are walled out. Oh. And it happened again. Oh. Oh, Nikov, oh, bro. <laughs> he, he deleted, deleted it. it. He just deleted it. Oh, my God. Don't tell me it's going to happen again. <laughs> oh, an another game where it felt like Nikov was in a pretty good position. Oh, he might be the, un <laughs> he might be the unluckiest Coming player in AOE2 ever. But seriously, I feel so bad for yeah. him. Well, he is far enough ahead that it feels like he could still win the game. Yeah. It just got a lot tougher for him. Yeah, that's precisely what we said in the first game, right? It's just... Oh, my God. I mean, I would be... I'd be tilted. I would absolutely be tilted because... And Doubt has a lot of camels, and he has the military lead. And it's time for another castle that Doubt could stop with a counter castle. The irony of the whole situation is everyone always makes jokes about Doubt's castles. And this has now happened twice now where Doubt is the one who has correctly just castled someone else's castle and denied it. Nikov is imping, and I still think he's in the best position just with gold control, but just the, you couldn't write the script. You couldn't write the script to this group, right? With what happened with Nikov against Vinchester. Not just the result to knock Vinchester out, but the way he won that final game. And then you just couldn't write the script of, of the consistency from game one to game two here and the problems for Nikov. It's it's just ridiculous. Doubt's imping and T West. He's actually and they're both going imp. Yeah. Doubt's less than a minute behind Nikov. And well, Doubt does have one more castle in total if he wants to go for that treb production and get into a treb war with Nikov. The problem I see for Nikov. First off, I haven't seen the missionaries pay off yet. 
as exciting as it was to see them. I'm not sure about it, but if Nikov wants to make trebs, he needs the castles. Or, and then he can't make as many conquistadors. Dal can make trebs with his castles, and then he can make camels with his stables. So in theory, it's easier for exactly. Dal to mass army. Right, because he has the two different production buildings. And what does Nikov do? Should he be making a transition maybe for Halbs at this point just because he sees Doubt has so many camels and so many stables already? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the only play. I think you just drop four or five barracks. You go Conk, Halb, and Treb. Forced out into an answer to that. And I don't think there is much of one because you can't go champion against the Halbs. You don't really have the best of range units. Maybe you'd have to go hand cannons or skirmishers, but it just forces Doubt into such a weak spot there. But Doubt Nikov is redocking on the south, so he might have an opportunity maybe to take this southern coastline and yeah. get a cannon galleon or two out and start pressuring those castles. As those Spanish cannon galleons are pretty powerful with how fast their projectile moves. Also, kind of a fun fact, Nikov has researched more blacksmith upgrades in Doubt's blacksmith that he just converted than Doubt has researched in his <laughs> blacksmith. Because Doubt doesn't have a single blacksmith upgrade, which is still a little confusing to me. But he's had a lot of work to do, and we've known it, right? Nikov's had a massive lead here in this game. And yeah. honestly, the, just the whole series, if you think back to game one, like, Nikov was so far ahead. In this game, he's been able to take advantage of it a little bit more. And we have Inquisition. Let's go. Missionaries and monks convert faster now. Dang, man. And that's actually a really important check if Doubt were to, say, go for chemistry and try to get Bombard Cannons out at any point. The Spanish Monks, Block Printing, and Inquisition and yeah. Redemption are one of the best units for countering those cannons. And especially since the Malians don't have Siege Engineers, it really takes that option away for Doubt. Yeah. I guess a fair point is, like, even if you get the armor grade upgrades on your camels, they're still going to die anyways, right? So maybe just the attack upgrades would have been beneficial to do more damage when you do get hits. But man, Nikov with this attack move running around with the Kongs is just doing so well. Just kill after kill after kill after kill. And I'd, I'd love to say he's having fun right now. I think obviously with the his standings, he's probably not enjoying himself as much, but he's playing amazing. Well, Nomad is a fun map according to Leary, right? He's probably having a ton of fun. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, and it's also very unfun to play from Doubt's position. And what a fight from Doubt. Like, Doubt could so easily just tap out, and he's still going to be second place. He should know that. But still, he's a crazy competitor. Continues to try his best here. He does have Heavy Camel now, and does have a few Trebs on the front. Still very concerned for him, though, because he just he doesn't have any more map control than he's had throughout this game. He still has zero answers to the Conquistador. Full credit to Nikov, who stayed on water a bit, which was the key. And ever since those conks started coming out, had really good economy behind this crazy aggression. Doubt's still trying to get enough of a heavy camel mass to take a fight. But the longer this goes on, the more missionaries Nikov is going to accumulate in the back. Yep. And he's just going full missionary and conquistador at this point. He's ha It's just insane. He, it must he has to be having fun. You have to... Be enjoying this. I would have loved to have seen him well, run in with... All the off at this point. Yeah, that's true. Wouldn't it have been cool if he sent in the 13 missionaries to go convert the Treb? Because you might lose a couple missionaries, right but you're not going to lose all of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing theocracy, too. So yeah. he, he can take very good conversions with those missionaries now. I mean, if he just needs to clear that northern castle, then he can go for the stables, and that'll be most of Doubt's production. Doubt's got 11 army, and three of that is fire ships. He must be waiting for Nikov to treb him down or something. He's probably like, Nikov, I'm dead. Kill me. But I'm a little shocked Doubt hasn't called the GG yet. <laughs> it just feels like there's no way back right now. Nikov just wants to have fun with his missionaries now. He is, he's under no pressure to treb quickly. Mm -hmm. He's just waiting for all of those upgrades, doing guilds even. The good old conk and donk right here. Let's go. Good to see missionaries get some love. I'd like to see uh, them being able to pick up relics. I don't think it would break Spanish. I think it would encourage a bit more missionary play. My idea, because there is a worry of that maybe being a little too strong because of their speed. My idea would be when the missionary is holding the relic, 
that they would be the same speed as a monk with a relic. If that's that could probably work. Because you just it, not, that you, is definitely achievable. Yeah, you, you just don't see missionaries. If you remember any other the, time. Uh, the original fervor tech only worked while a monk was carrying a relic. I forgot about that. Yeah, in, in AOC, that, I mean that was like that for a long time. And there we go, GG. Nikov dominates. A little bit bittersweet because, well, we know how close game one was, but it is what it is. Scores one one here. The forty dollars for each player right now, and we have one more game to close out Group A, which will be. Well, it's on. Wait a second. Hold on. I forget the home maps. Uh, we'll we'll look at that in a second, and we'll know what the final game is going to oh, be. Did they play these games out of order? Well, it, they have the choice. So if you wish to, you can play someone else's home map, which I think is why I got a oh, little really? confused there. Yeah, it's happened. I don't think I've seen that happen at all. It happened one other time in MBL versus Yo. And I know that that was a question was raised. And apparently that was our intentions with the rules originally, because that's what I told JBR. Apparently wasn't clarified in the rule book. MBL did it. We were like, hey, that's cool with us, actually. And we amended it since. So I don't know if Nikov saw the change or he just... I mean, he clearly was wanting the confidence boost and Nomad with Spanish is a great way to do that. Um, but yeah, 65,000 resources Nomad. collected there. And uh, Doubt... I don't think Doubt had a bad game, but he didn't kill it, the it's fish. Spanish on Nomad is hard. Yeah, you got to kill the fish, and he, man. And did a good job keeping them alive. And here we are, the final game of titans league group a we know exactly where everyone's going to be in this group we can talk more about that later but we do know that nikov will be relegated doubt will be second place and uh pretty good civ matchup here i think byzantines as you said t west if the game goes on for a bit they've got a, some great opportunities here against the japanese so i think you'd expect doubt to try and use all the little early bonuses japanese have to gain an edge and in my mind that includes a man at arm play yeah, definitely. I feel like that's the one thing the Japanese do better than the Byzantines. Even though their fishing ships are more efficient, it feels like in the long run, just that cheaper Imperial Age for the Byzantines often matters more in this matchup. Yep. Yeah, I I think the Byzantine faster firing and the additional HP on your docks also works twofold. Because sometimes bonuses work one direction. Like, I guess, Japanese, right? Your fishing ships are uh tankier but that's a defensive bonus right you're not gonna like fish someone else's pond because of that but with byzantines right. more hp on your dock means that if it's one dock versus one dock you're likely gonna hold and then if it's one dock versus one dock you're gonna have the better fires so what that does is that tells the japanese player dang if i'm gonna go water against them i've got to go two docks like i've got to go crazy investment and then also it's like you got to be scared, even though you're Japanese and have more HP, that they could get an edge on your pond. So I don't know. It just feels like any way you slice it, Byzantines are going to be good. And then you combine that with the cheaper units in the mid game and the extra vision you get from Town Watch being for free and feudal and Town Patrol and Castle. It's just like so many bonuses that feel so nice with Byzantines. Yeah, And also the unit composition. It just feels really good against the Japanese. You don't really have... In infantry focus, you have that trash unit focus and then an arbalest focus. So the Japanese, they can go halves, but what are they going to do? Halb against arb, halb against cataphract. Yeah. It really takes out one of their best options. Yeah. And it's so, it's so tricky too, because if anyone, any other sieve goes skirmisher or goes uh, pikeman against you, it's the Japanese, you get real, real excited and you think, oh, great. Now I can go for samurai or champion. But then Byzantines have the Cataphract, <laughs> which wrecks <Yep>. infantry. <laughs> so, like, Byzantines do truly have the answer for everything. And if I were playing in this, I think I would let someone get Japanese if I could get Byzantines. I think I'd always prefer to have this matchup. I think I would, too. And Just... I even saw some of this in, uh, in Double Cup on some of the crazy random maps with water in different combinations. That faster imp for Byzantines combined with just the extra HP on their castles and the ability to add in cataphracts. If you get into one of those mirrored castle wars, the Byzantines 
have such a great ability to win them. And then they also have Bombard Cannons. The Doubt Scout almost goes down there, but he kills a villager from Nikov that was on the dock. The good news for Nikov here is that he does actually complete the dock so he can still make fishing ships. And <laughs> Nikov is pissed. <laughs> Nikov says, I'm in gold league already. Uh, bleep, bleep. Yeah, I feel like this is the only time the chat filter has actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> Doubt says, says $40, man. <laughs> and Nikov's like, dude, chill. Just like, come on. Like, I'm already <laughs> upset over here. <laughs> oh, bro. I mean, that is a very relatable reaction. And Doubt says, you are too good when chill. So Doubt's, he's complimenting him, I guess. That's just, you got to love our scene, man. And I was kind of thinking the same, too. You know, like, no, come on, dude. Don't be a sweaty nerd. Don't kill that Bill. Holy, but again, especially with doubt too. He's not the player you'd expect to do that. Yeah, that's true. But you know, doubt is is super serious when it comes to tourneys, and as trolly as he can be, and as silly as he can be in his ranked games, he's a very different player. And you know, with that, I I, I love to see doubt in tournaments because honestly, it's like there are some players, even you know, some of the biggest names that they're like, okay, just another tourney. Let me troll around. Let me do some things. But like doubt, he doesn't. It's not about, you know, entertainment for others, even though he can be very entertaining. He's locked and loaded. He always has good strategy. He's always looking to win. And that is why he was, uh, I think, second in his group season one. He's going to end up second in his group season two and, and maybe even be the favorite in the round of 12. Such a fun player. And now he just needs to be careful that... He doesn't lose his scout to Nikov's scout at any point in Feudal. Yep. Sometimes you snipe off the Vill, but you spend so much HP on the scout doing it that it feels like it's not worth it. Yeah, agreed. And Nikov with a full HP scout, that that really means that the men at arms play isn't as viable for doubt now. He's adding in the barracks on land, and Nikov will scout that. I think he saw if he saw that. But Look it makes it harder to do maybe one or two archers just when you don't have the scout to back them up against the other scout. Yep, Nikov is trying to sneak the vill, and Doubt could see this. God, he's playing so good. He can see it. He can't really stop it easily, but he's going to try. He's going to make a galley now and try and deny this whole thing. And Doubt, I think Nikov, sorry, excuse me, knows he's been spotted. I don't know if the galley timing will work here. It's going to be quite close. I guess he hasn't started making the dock yet. It, it actually might be perfect timing. You know, here's a question. If you if you see that in your doubt, is there any world where you send one or two fishing ships just to try to lock Nikov from making that dock? Absolutely. Because right now you're making a galley, and you know Nikov wants to dock at the edge. You could line your fishing ships up, and actually means that he wouldn't have a spot to place it. And it's not like the Vill can attack the fishing ships. They could just stop the with dock. The, with the way them. Nikov's series has been going, I was going to say this is not going to go up. But yeah, I really think that's a misplay from doubt. The galley takes too long to produce, and now you're going to have a Byzantine fire on you, and your galley doesn't accomplish anything. So I think you, the better reaction there for Doubt's going to be, know the dock's coming, assume you can't stop it, and just at least get a fire galley out so you can win that war. Uh, but it was a, you have to make a decision right away. He did everything right to scout it, and he kind of paid the price having the weak scout from earlier in the game. Yeah. And right now he's going for a stable and scouts, so he's never going to get fletching on that galley. It's just going to be a waste of resources in the fire galley fight, mostly. I do really like the scout approach, though. I feel like it also has surprised Nikov here. Nikov saw that scout, assumed it was the weak one, and is kind of like thinking, what is this guy doing right now? Uh, we do have yeah. on and the Nikov right side... And Nikov has to be careful because... Oh, they have the dock there? Yeah, yeah. yeah and... But I was saying Nikov has so much fish on the water that he's not taking food under the TC. Mm -hmm. So if he walls to the TC, scouts could still run in. Some villagers here in the south kill the scout. One villager dies, though. And that's Doubt trying to make a second dock because he's worried about Nikov's potential with Byzantines. And, you know, in general, I've seen a lot of cross games by now. Even if you're fishing, I feel like you always do need the berries at some stage, right? And I don't like that aspect of Nikov. I actually think he's done the right thing in many ways, as silly as it looks, if he wants to play water, but 
You're gonna need berries too at some point. Yeah, and now the problem is if you make bills from the TC, what do you do with them? He's walled <laughs> off the back of his base, but do you just chop those stragglers? Where, where do they go? Yeah, that's true. Still waiting for Nikov to eject in the south here. When he does, he's probably going to have three fires in a demo, which could obviously surprise Doubt. Doubt needs to split his ships up. But Doubt hasn't killed a ton with his scouts. And Nikov's been fishing like crazy in the north, and we will have an eventual battle on the sea on the right. With Doubt now sending a villager... Oh, excuse me, not a villager. Uh, just army to the left to see that Nikov's not over there. Yeah, Spear and two scouts. As Nikov ejects from the dock, the oh. demo comes out. That was so well that executed. Was he even he even saves the weak fire. And now it's Japanese fish, but Dao could absolutely lose his fishing ships there if Nikov focuses on it. Nikov might be focused on the right side as well, where he could lose a villager to the uh, scouts from Dao. This map is so complicated. I love watching it, though. It's so intricate. Every game's a little bit different, and so much can go wrong at any time. <laughs> yeah, and it's so difficult to determine how much to invest on each of the lakes when you're going to see that flag in the dock, but then you don't know what's inside of it. Yep. Also, this is good from Doubt. He's, he's sacrificing fishing ships so he can use his fire to kill Nikov's fire, and Nikov probably just assumed he would win that, but he looks over here and he is not. And then Nikov walls in Doubt's villager on the left side. That's a beautiful play. I guess Doubt could always just chop the tree, though, and palisade it, but... He could. <laughs> yeah. But it keeps his vill safe. Yeah, it does. He's going to bring his scouts over. It probably will free up that villager eventually. And on the right, it's still rather complicated to call. I, I think advantage Byzantines the whole way through, though, and Nikov will hold on water there. And Doubt chops it. Yep, there you and go. He frees himself, exactly. And Doubt's on the way to the next stage faster. Nikov does have some land army now. He's got one archer and a couple spearmen, but uh, one archer's not going to accomplish all that much here. And he didn't accomplish all that much on the water in the south at the end of the day. Doubt defended very nicely. And it looks like Nikov will probably win the right side, but he hasn't benefited with fishing yet. Archer and Spearman Those now. Those are a lot of low HP scouts, though, to the point where that Archer might even pick one or two off or let the Spear get a couple pokes in. Yep, yep, yep. So, Doubt has a stable and another stable. So he's going to go, like... I, I think it's going to be similar to what we've seen from the Lithuanians. Maybe just Knights and Monks. And hope to get in. Hope the fishing ships you do have are enough and just do not fight on water anymore against the Byzantines. And Nikov's adding in fish on the right-hand side. He's won that. Doubt's mostly fished a lot of the fish in the south by this point. Only two and a half left. And then Nikov should have the other three pawns. Yeah, so Nikov should be in a better position with the long term, as long as he doesn't die to the early wave that Doubt goes for. And you just know Doubt's going to go for monks, right? He's even bringing Vils forward, so he might go siege. And here he comes. Two villagers. Two stables. Knights are on the way. Doubt's going to go farm up. Two upgrade. stables for Nikov. Huh. Well, you could tell Doubt wanted to go Siege Workshop because he had to drop a blacksmith at home because he'd forgotten that. <laughs> yeah, it is a prerequisite. And I think the farm upgrade might... Could that just be a, a reaction to not having any of the other pawns and he realizes he needs to add in a bunch of farms? I And he doesn't have any yet, so you might as well get heavy plow. I think it's a habit thing, but I don't like it because the way this game is flowing with 14 fish against 8 is if you don't kill fast, you have problems. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I, I could be very wrong on that. It, again, it's very hard to get a balance down on this map, so sitting here acting like, oh, you know, you rushed an upgrade isn't really that a fair of an assessment i think but the siege on the other hand the siege i think is absolutely not the play i think you needed monks here right because the camels are going to be out from nikov so what does the siege do that's three stables cheap byzantine camels and he has the fish to power that he has three lakes worth of fish and he's adding in fish on both sides and still has eight fish in the north 
needs to move them to the deep fish. They're on the shore fish now, but you should notice that pretty soon as they're going idle. I, I know that, you know, this, this game is one we will continue to cover here. But the way this is looking, if Nikov wins this game, is he could have 3-0'd this T-West with that he first could have game. That, that one <laughs> castle. <laughs> that one him. castle. Oh my goodness. Because this is such a great game from him, right? I mean, Doubt, Doubt is all in one TC. Doubt absolutely needs conversions. There's going to be so many camels from Nikov. He could put a stop to this forward right here, right now. And Doubt will hope for a conversion there. Nikov expected the monk to hop out. He will lose a camel, though. And actually, the Scorpions have done an ex excellent job here for Doubt. That will hold this position. Yeah, he did get the Scorpions out rather than a Manganel. And he's thinking they will be at least somewhat useful in this fight against the Camels. Yep. But still, Byzantine Camels, you get so many of them. Yeah, normally I think you'd see Nikov add Monks here. So I'm a little surprised that he hasn't seen that. But he's had excellent micro with the camels. He had a couple runners there so he could take out the scorpions. But Doubt is holding. It's just, as you said, should be easier for Nikov to afford things right now because he's got fishing ships. That said, he doesn't have a single farm. And Doubt's still hanging around. Power of monks and a couple scorpions. Scorpions actually were a perfect move here for Doubt. Maybe if he didn't have the scorpions and the monks, he would have lost the control. But the combination has been really helpful. The Scorpion, Monk, and Knight. But as the KD is equal right now, you feel like the Byzantine Camels are just so much cheaper in the long run, even if you're trading. I agree. Yeah, that, that's the way I think this should flow. Let's see. Conversions, healing, and then the Scorpions. What, what are the difference makers here? Obviously, without the conversions, without the Scorpions, it's a problem. And Doubt will fall apart. He will lose his push. This could also mean he loses his buildings. And he's going to drop barracks now, so he's going to go full spearman behind this. A good follow-up with the Japanese. I just don't know if pikeman is possible for Doubt right now. Here's where Nikov is adding in that workshop and the monastery. And, well, he is the Byzantines. If he needs to, he can just go cheap pikemen or cheap skirmishers of his own to yep. counter the Japanese pikemen. Great job from Nikov. It was looking a little worrying there, but... Now, at this point, you just think... Well, what should happen here is Doubt can kill absolutely everything, right? He's going to have 14 camels. Nikov will need to go for conversions from a monastery that's probably going to go down. So he falls back to drop town centers. He'll try pikemen. But we already saw how a couple scorpions and monks can help against counter units. That's precisely what Nikov's going to do. And Nikov could just steamroll right across the map. But Doubt is on... Remember, he got the farm upgrade. And he's on three TCs. So if Nikov doesn't do the damage fast, you never know. Three TCs and he's adding fish traps. So his fish... Oh, do you see that fish in the bottom? It's like bugging out there. Uh, the south? Yeah. There was, I don't know what it, what it was doing. It was like it was trying to form a formation with another unit. The fish trap? The fish trap or the fishing ship or what? The, the fishing ship. Okay. I, I didn't see it. Yeah, maybe he had grouped it's it up like or something It's like a very else. weird DE pathfinding thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Nikov's going to add the second town center, so he's not forgetting about villagers. Still keeping some villagers That's on stone. That's forward town center. That's true. It's pretty, pretty gutsy, I guess, if you don't have the control, but he's got plenty of control at the moment. Adding crossbow as well. He's with a ram. I think crossbow's a great decision. I think the monks were a great decision. The ram... Probably more needed than the Manganel right now. And Doubt's going to be forced to add some siege to stop his buildings from going down. He's lost the barracks to camels. He'll lose the next barracks to the yeah, ram. Yeah. That's a Byzantine monk to heal the camels, too. Yeah. And Doubt. This is the spot of the game he wanted to avoid, right? This is where why we like Byzantine so much in this matchup. It's just a safe pick. And... Japanese, in general, I'd say these days, do not feel like a great civilization in Castle Age. It's like Dark Age and Feudal are great. Especially on a water map, there's reasons to pick them, but their bonuses just seem to really fall off a bit. Unless maybe like the Samurai play later on is viable, which is tricky against a lot of civs these days. Yeah, that's very matchup dependent. 
And it feels like the Byzantines, just everything that you want to do on this map, they have a bonus for it. Yeah. They have a bonus for fishing. They have the cheap camels for map control. And then if you get to the imp situation and you're controlling a hill with a castle, they have bonuses for that too. Taking a market away from Doubt is already very strong because he loves this market. But it's actually even stronger when you're raiding like this because Doubt's eco isn't going to be perfectly balanced. He needs a market to balance things. And good micro from Nikov. He goes in for another Manganel. The split micro that we saw a lot of in the first game with his crossbows used there. Camel's kind of trapped. So that's not the best. But Nikov just pressuring Doubt nonstop here. Doubt's still not able to find a response to this. And Doubt, he doesn't have any of the Fletching or Bodkin upgrades on the TCs. So those camels can tank a bit of that TC fire. This is the same Nikov that we saw in that first game, right? The same Nikov we saw in game number two as well with the Conquistador Micro. Obviously, it's a little bit more difficult, I'd say, with the Crossbowman. And Doubt has the stone for a castle, but where <laughs> is he going to place it? I was just going to say, when's Nikov going to place his? <laughs> he actually <laughs> sold his stone, so that's probably smart. <laughs> It's probably smarter than building a castle with it. Yeah. He is going for redemption, which feels like a really nice move against Doubt Siege because he's playing a dangerous game right now. You got those crossbows. He, he's doing it well so far, but it's two Manganels now. I mean, if Doubt were to clear this, you clear and then you just drop a castle right next to the whole push before it can get going again. That's what Doubt wants to do, which is why he's not waiting... Uh, or why he's not placing it right now. Because I feel like a defensive castle at the bottom of the hill is, is just inviting the Byzantines to take the hill from you. Look at these farms yeah, for Nikov on the front. I mean, that this is an area, if he loses this area, he could absolutely lose this game. Uh, look at how forward that one farm is. Like, that's, that's not even by the TC. It's just yeah. placing a farm. Uh, Manganel could get converted. Redemption's in. There are two of them, though. And Dow could kill that monk. Sanctity wasn't in yet. So that's a little frustrating for the timing there for Nikov. I think now Dow will know Redemption's in. And okay, Manganel converted. Dow, as you would expect though, perfectly timed with his castle. He will complete it. And Nikov's going to be a little frustrated here. It just It's insane that Dow is somehow able to come out of these situations alive. He's so good at holding on. And now he has not just one, but two golds as he's moved to the gold in the back of his base too. And still has access to that gold to the north of his base near you know, those other two TCs he's adding in. Even adding in some watchtowers just to give him space near the TCs to make sure he isn't harassed. It's just so tough, man. Like you still have no counterattacking possibilities here. And like any defense you go for is just sinking you further and further into Castle Age against Byzantines, which have a cheaper imp. This aggression from Nikov is wonderful. He just shifts focus. He's like, okay, great. Go for guard tower. I dare you. That sounds awesome. Bet you don't have your upgrades yet. Doubt's getting fletching. He's getting bodkin. And Nikov's just wait, ready. Dominant those display. Those will have a hill bonus too against that tower. And that will go down very quickly. Those repair bills could get flattened. And then the TCs, right? Then you've got... Now we might actually see Nikov build a castle. Now this would be a good castle spot, but those TCs will likely get flattened by any type of push like this. Ballistics on the way. Nikov's got the fourth Manganel on the way. He's dropping another monastery next to this as well, and like he does not care at all. He's angry at this game right now. He's like, this is an angry yeah. Nikov he's, after what happened in game one. It. He's realizing if he had just gotten that castle up or just not placed it so forward in game one Ugh. he's probably winning 3-0 here unbelievable drama dude i still cannot really believe the how this series has panned out it is maybe very nikov you know he's had some unlucky moments so many moments throughout his career where the word luck or or unlucky could come into play but it, the, where there was no luck involved was the first three weeks right the first three weeks he was not the player that we saw against Vinchester and not the player that we've seen today. And there was more consistency from Valis and more consistency from running. As we have Nikov on the way to Imp, again, consistency is the key here. And doubt has been super consistent, obviously, to be here right now talking about second place. 
Guard and tower doubt. rush. <laughs> I don't really see if that doubt has a way out of this. You can try to add towers. Yeah. Has I'd... to rebuild the market, but Nikov's just, he's going to be up to imp, and he just needs to find a way to get, he has a castle going up to defend the guard towers, and just needs to get a few trebs, do chemistry, get a few cannons. I think it's a he's positive. A really good spot. I do think it's a positive for Doubt that the castle Nikov's building right now is there instead of on the middle hill. Because the middle hill, I think the game's completely over. And trebuchets rain down on his castles. But I, I agree that it just hasn't felt like there's any way back for Doubt in this game. And Nikov, he, when he gets army control, he normally keeps it. And he's going to obliterate that TC. Doubt still has no army to defend from this. He's just dropping towers and towers... They're not as menacing at high elo. And players are just going to be able to run away from them. Army is king. And Dalva is none of it right now. And Nikov is just going to massacre some of these tower builders with the crossbows. He has ballistics. He has thumb ring now. He's doing armor so he can even sit under the towers for a bit. And that's going to be a lot of dead vills on that tower. Yep. And Dal will see imp from Nikov. Maybe. I actually could lose his MTC. He's going to call GG because he's going to realize he's going to lose his MTC. Or he's going to lose um, his not MTC again. and call not on GG. this map again, Doubt. <laughs> that did happen to him in his... Uh, I forget what get, who he was playing. Vinchester, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye, Imp. Yeah, th there goes the MTC again. Whoa, there was a monk in there with the relic? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, there goes the MTC. All right, well, this is like oh, the most oh, doubt finish like... to the group stage ever. Yeah. Oh, doubt suddenly he has a lot of resources he can spend. Yeah, true. Is he going to... Oh, Nikov's in the south again with a fire galley. Oh, nice. Good work There's there. There's GG from doubt. Well... And Nikov... Well, that was about as close as it could have been. Two to one with a really good shot in game one at that sweep seriously man i mean it, it's gut wrenching for him but he just couldn't deliver in game one if you guys didn't see game number one it's honestly unbelievable that we're here and nikov fell so short because it wasn't just one game it was th that one game that he lost was a game that he was winning and with three two maybe even one more villager building a castle he would have won the game and moved on to the freaking playoffs instead is relegated just ridiculous scenes i i hope titans league goes on for a very long time but honestly and i know it's a very caster thing to say oh this is the craziest thing ever what's happened here in group a might never happen again like it has surpassed all expectations you have uh some expected aspects so accm first doubt second but then you have the two promoted players valis who's going to be in third moving to the playoffs you have running who's in fourth, staying alive in Platinum for the next season. And then you have Nikov and you have Vinchester getting relegated. Uh, players who have just been insane. Vinch Vinchester has been insane and last season too. That's all of the accomplishments that Vinchester had. Yep. Now he's being relegated. Uh, crazy, but consistency is key, guys. You can't just like show up against promoted players and, and, and get beat and you got to get wins from round to round. And um, so... You know, even six wins, is you're not safe. Uh, really happy. I know the the conversation right now is about Nikov and Vinchester getting relegated. But I do want to say congratulations to Vallis in particular. Because his first two weeks were abysmal. And then he turned it around and he's moving to the playoffs. And then running absolutely deserves to stay up as well because of how good he played. Beating Vinch and, and beating some other players and getting consistent wins um, on the map pool. So... I'm excited for uh, the players who will be moving on out of Group A, but I think all of the final day, I, I'm going to pull it up here, T-West, but I think all the final day is honestly just finishing Group B. Yeah, well, Group D is still has... Uh, am I missing unless one? Unless Wikipedia hasn't been updated. That has Tato and Sato oh, to shoot. determine who goes to the playoffs in Group D. Oh, yeah. How did I forget about that? That's massive, actually. Because and in group actually, D, we have a we have a situation where Tato could actually be relegated yeah. if Barls beats Sato and then Tato loses to Sato. Yes, yeah, that, I, for, I I I can't believe I didn't bring that up. Yeah, exactly. Like, Tato is really going to need to get wins against Sato. 
we will have uh, a lot of Group D action, actually. Uh, we have Tato versus Sato, which has to happen. And then Sato versus Barls. Um, and pretty much what you just said, T-West, is true. It would be crazy to see a player like Tato going down. Barls been, has been hanging in there all season. Uh, and, you know, gives himself a fighting chance there. So, um, and then the matches I was alluding to in Group B, we have... MBL versus Bact. We have Leary versus Yo. And then we have the big one, MBL versus Leary, which, I mean, they're good friends, but you could see one of them sending the other one down or, or one of their friends in a position at the very least where they're not into the playoffs. Yeah. And Group B is also crazy how Draken is seven and eight in games, but one and four in series. Mm -hmm. And he could still go to the playoffs. Yeah. Crazy. And uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to talk about that, but um, I had a really fun day here T West casting with you. I'll definitely have you in, come in again if you're going to be covering more. So yeah, thanks absolutely. for joining.